As the summer approaches in 2016, my convention adventures took me to Sandusky, Ohio for my first ever convention in Ohio, ColossalCon 2016. Several people have told me that this con is known for being one of the best party cons. I personally attended this con primarily for the guests. So what was my experience like at my first ever ColossalCon? After a four and a half hour road trip from Chicago, I finally arrived at the Kalahari Resort and Convention Center in Sandusky, Ohio, where the con was held at. Right away, I have to say that this venue was awesome. It fits the theme of this con unbelievably well. The con atmosphere was amazing at this location. It really did feel like I'm on a tropical getaway when roaming around this area. If you like party cons, then you are in the right place at this convention. This location is known to have several awesome areas for photo shoots. Photographers and videographers will absolutely love the location of this con. There was an indoor water park and so many other different attractions at this location. For food, there were restaurants inside the actual resort. Remember to bring a lot of money as food can get pretty expensive at this location. Just try to avoid the overpriced concession stands as they are not worth your money. I personally did not stay at the Kalahari, but at the end of the day, I really wished I did. I felt that I missed out on a lot of the con experience for not staying at the resort. As for the actual convention center itself, it definitely felt very crowded at times, especially on Saturday. For a con that had over 17,000 attendees in 2015, this makes me wonder if this convention center will continue to handle such a large attendance as this con grows. One comment about the convention center was that I wish that there were more places to get water. There were hardly any water stations at this convention center, and I wasn't able to bring my own water bottle as outside food and beverages were not allowed. If you are planning to stay at hotels outside the Kalahari, be warned that the free parking at the Kalahari is very competitive. You may need to park on the grass or at the overflow parking lot at the Sandusky Mall if the parking gets full at this location. Friday's registration was flawless from my experience. I pre-registered for a VIP badge and I was able to get it immediately when I walked in. The friend I was with registered at the door and he got his badge quickly as well. Like I said in the beginning, my primary focus for attending ColossalCon this year was to meet several of the con's guests. ColossalCon had a guest list where a majority of them are guests we don't see often in the Midwest. They had a nice mixture of voice actor and musical guests. ColossalCon definitely had at least one guest you were dying to see. Friday for us focused primarily on getting autographs from the voice actors. When it comes to large cons, I usually take caution when it comes to autographs as lines can get very lengthy, but you don't have to worry about that at this year's ColossalCon. With the exception of Vic Mignogna who had a very long line, all the other guests had relatively short and manageable lines. While autograph handling started a little rocky, it was handled extremely well as the day progressed. One thing I do have to say about every single autograph session I have been to is that lines move very fast. So fast you can probably get a majority of things signed within a single autograph session. As a VIP attendee, I also attended the VIP autograph session where you can get autographs from all of the con's guests. This autograph session was such a near overkill autograph session that I got nearly everything I wanted signed after this session. If you are going to ColossalCon for autographs and want to get them out of the way quickly, then I highly recommend getting the VIP badge. You also get other goodies like a free t-shirt, a backpack, and two tickets to cut lines for events. Other than autographs on Friday, I scouted the location to see where everything was. I was bummed that ColossalCon did not have a physical guidebook. They handed out the schedule and map of the convention on small flyers and directed you to download their app to look at the detailed schedule. The good news, however, is that the Kalahari has free Wi-Fi all over the venue. And from my entire con experience, I never ran into any problems with the Wi-Fi. And that is really saying a lot for a large size convention. As long as you use Wi-Fi, getting the schedule on your mobile device should be easy, which completely justifies not having a physical guidebook. I checked out the dealer's room, and I can definitely say that this is the weakest part of the entire convention. For a large size con, you would think that the dealer's room would be large along with it, but that wasn't the case at ColossalCon. The dealer's room felt as big as dealer's rooms at mid-sized conventions. In fact, some mid-sized cons beat out ColossalCon's dealer's room in terms of size. As for the artist alley, it was an incredible artist alley with tons of incredible artwork from so many talented artists. 
If I had the money, I would have probably walked out with so many prints that they will barely fit in my bedroom. The last thing I checked out on Friday was the game room. Colossal Con had a nice game room overall. My favorite part of the game room was the arcade gaming hosted by Tokyo Attack. There was so much to do and so much to see at this part of the game room. As for console gaming, I felt that this part of the game room was very cramped. There was a strong focus on tournaments at this part of the game room that there wasn't a lot of room for those who want to sit down and play a quick game. But if you're a competitive player who loves going to tournaments, then you are going to love this part of the game room. Saturday focused a lot on panels and events. I attended many of the Q&A panels with several of the hard to come by guests, and I enjoyed every single panel from my experience. I did run into some late panels, but it wasn't a deal breaker at all. ColossalCon had tons of different panels and events. From the two raves on Friday and Saturday, to all the concerts, to the Masquerade, the Symphonic Anime Orchestra, as well as Samurai Dan and Jillian's legendary Cards Against Humanity panel, ColossalCon will keep you busy all weekend long. They even had Mega Championship Wrestling at this con for all you wrestling fans out there. Several of the people who attended that panel told me it was such an intense event. On my final day at Colossal Con, I took one last stroll through the dealer's room in Artist Alley and went to the Sunday Otaku Flea Market. It was a big flea market with so much to see. It was in multiple rooms around the venue. My only issue was that it was very cramped in the main events room, and there was a lot of extra space in this room that was not utilized by the flea market at all. And yes, the fire alarm did go off on Sunday. Luckily, I didn't run into any problems when we evacuated the venue and when we got back into the building. From what I was told, the fire alarm malfunctioned and nobody actually pulled it. The final panel we attended was voice actor trivia hosted by Cassandra Lee Morris. Erica Harlicker also took part in this panel. It was a trivia contest where the winner of the contest can take home a delicious can of Bush's baked beans, as well as an awesome bottle of mustard and a delicious bottle of barbecue sauce. Unfortunately, our team won second place, so no barbecue for us. The top three teams also won an autographed print from Cassandra. And with that, this ended my entire experience at ColossalCon. Before I get to my verdict, here is my newly updated scoring system. Starting with ColossalCon, I will now grade cons on a 1 to 10 scale, with each having its own experience level. And I will no longer use decimals in my scores. So let's move on to my verdict. Overall, my first year experience at ColossalCon has been nothing more than a great experience. I felt that ColossalCon is a great convention to start off the summer season. This leads to the first thing I liked about ColossalCon, the con atmosphere. It truly did feel like a tropical getaway at this location. The con was so full of energy that I can tell from the entire crowd that this is a party that doesn't feel like it's gonna end. Another thing I liked about ColossalCon are all the panels and events. You will never get bored at ColossalCon as there is so much to do and so much to see that it will be difficult to plan out your entire con schedule. The primary reason why I went to ColossalCon was its unique guest list. These are guests we don't normally see in the Midwest. I hope other Midwest cons are taking notes from ColossalCon's amazing guest list. Keep inviting more of these types of guests and I'll keep coming back to this con. The next thing I liked was the handling of the autograph sessions. The staff did an awesome job with the autograph sessions, which I know can be very difficult at larger conventions. Almost all of the autograph sessions were near overkill. You shouldn't have any problems getting autographs at this con. Next is the Artist Alley. All the artists at this Artist Alley had so much quality to offer at this con that without a doubt there will be something that will make you say wow. And lastly, I would like to talk about how well the mobile application worked for this con. I originally thought having no physical guidebooks and only the app would not end up well, but ColossalCon proved me wrong. The mobile app worked flawlessly from my experience thanks to the free Wi-Fi at the Kalahari. The things I disliked about ColossalCon this year was first, the dealer's room. It was a small dealer's room at a large size con. Compared to the other large size cons I have attended, ColossalCon by far has the smallest dealer's room. The second thing I disliked about ColossalCon was the parking. It was very competitive. Be sure to keep that in mind for those who stay at hotels outside the Kalahari. 
I advise that you arrive early to snag a parking spot. And lastly, I felt that the convention center could use more water stations. There weren't a lot of places to get water at this con other than the small amount of water fountains near the bathrooms, with some actually functioning properly. Colossal Con was a fantastic event for any anime and gaming fan, and was worth the long drive from Chicago. I really do want to come back next year to experience any event I wasn't able to go this year. If you are looking for the ultimate anime getaway, then look no further to Colossal Con and get ready to party for all 4 days. On a scale of 1 to 10, I give Colossal Con 2016 an 8 out of 10. A lot of people have different experiences at cons, so what was your experience like at Colossal Con? Please let me know in the comments, and if you like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more convention adventure videos. So until then, I will see you at the next con. This is Justin, thank you for watching.